Welcome to a special series called The Global Crisis Monitor, featured on the Treasury Update podcast. Thank you for joining. On this episode of the podcast, series host Meredith Zonzius talks with Craig Jeffrey and Alexa Cook of Strategic Treasure on the 10th period results from the COVID-19 Impact and Response Survey. They cover insightful results from the micro-survey revealing signs of improvements with view to organizational liquidity, AR, orders, and economic shifts around the globe. Listen in to the discussion to find out what's happening with recovery today and the weeks ahead. Welcome back to the show, Craig and Alexa. Thanks, Meredith. Happy to be here. Yeah, me too. We are now 10 survey periods into the Global Recovery Monitor. Let's start off with the top headlines. I'll start off with a couple areas of significant change. So first, uh, organizational liquidity continued its long streak of improvement on a week over week or period over period basis. And this one is the most positive we've had so far. So from the the prior weeks, uh, there was 36.8% viewed their corporate liquidity position more positive versus just under 10% had a, had a more negative view than that period of time. So this is a six survey period, which is eight weeks um, with a positive move. Second, um, AR is, um, has changed as well. This was, uh, for those who have been paying attention, we measure the sentiment for various liquidity elements of what's improved and what's deteriorated. And accounts receivable is now um, about two and a half times negative when for most of the the monitor, it's been five times negative. In other words, every five companies that are negative, there's only one company that's positive. That's been the way for most of the monitor. Um, That's broken uh, last couple of periods during our survey. So it's still the most negative item we have, but it has continued to improve. And um, yeah, we look to see when this uh, hits a flat level uh, over a week over week or period over period basis. On the economic improvements piece, the three month is by far the highest, being the highest performer, and it's nearing equilibrium and is the exact same as last period. The 12 month outlook has dipped back slightly, and from this measure, that makes a full economic recovery about six and a half to seven months out, which is shifting this from early Q4 of 2020 just to about late Q4 of 2020. This past survey period, we have added in a few survey questions on positive data developments, staff locations and GDPs in home countries. Can you walk us through some of this period's findings? The most positive data or development from one of our free form questions was uh, customer orders and demand. A number of companies noted that this was um, one of the most positive data elements or development that they've seen. Second, the CARES program, the Paycheck Protection Program in the U.S., uh, and similar programs in some other countries uh, were viewed very, very favorably, helping to maintain staff. And then finally, on the health front, uh, PPE, or personal protective equipment availability, was listed as a very positive element. And then in the, the past week, we had asked the location of where staff was working. So net more workers working on site was 14 percent and then net more workers working remote was just under 26 percent and remote or on-site work being about the same was just under 60 percent yeah and we this is the second cycle where we've asked you know what letter or symbol will the recovery look like you know we all heard of the v the u the w etc so um, w showed up even stronger than last time um, nearly 45%. So, you know, up, uh, up a couple, uh, two and a half uh, percentage points there in the population. The swoosh, where there's the sharp dip, followed by a longer and slower uphill climb, was just over one in five, slight uh, decline from the prior period. And the U, uh, sitting at the bottom for a while and then recovering, was in the low 20s, pretty much matching what we saw before. So those are the those are the three predominant ones. There's there's more letters and symbols that you can get from the report. We asked a new question this week was GDP in your home country, and this was a quarter over quarter look to see where things were going. 
we wanted to gauge how people thought the recovery would work, especially with the uh, the dip happening for most places, the end, the middle to the end of March uh, time frame. So the very end of the first quarter with the bulk of the drop happening in Q2. So we looked at Q3 over Q2. That was just about 27% viewed that as uh, one of the positive numbers, and some were quite positive on the, the bounce they expected. Q4 over Q3, we saw a 43% view of being positive, so a pretty good jump from the Q3 over Q2. And we took first quarter of 2021 over the last quarter of 2020, uh, 60, uh, just under 62% saw those numbers as, as going up, and some of them quite high. So very interesting. You'll really want to see some of the details there because it's calibrated a lot, but you can see increasing optimism, uh, especially as we get into, uh, we move into Q4 uh, on this measure. Well, yeah, that's a that's a great jump right there. Um, you had said that there were some changes with top concerns. Can you give us a quick rundown on what those changes were? Yeah, I'll give you I'll give you that. So the top concerns. This is a free form uh, response where people can type in what their top concerns are. Economic considerations. This showed up in a number of different words. That was uh, definitely number one. But coming in a strong second was safety considerations as Economies are opening up, opening up, people are coming back to work. Those are some of the key areas there. And then just to jump into the weekly forced ranking list that we have, we go over that every week. There's seven uh, different elements that everyone has to force rank in terms of their concerns. Number one, again, is the direct financial impact of the business. The other change uh, in terms of the top pick staff safety protocols had moved to the second highest uh, of those that put that at the top. Uh, and that's now uh, sitting at number four in terms of those who picked it as their number one concern. So perhaps a little bit of diminishment of the return to work concerns. But notably, if you take the average, it's sitting at number two. So uh, I know I'm giving you a couple different numbers, but uh, those are a few of the changes we saw. How are the time yeah. estimates for health and financial normalcy looking? So on the health outlook, the extension of time until COVID-19 becomes a minor health issue has stayed the same at the nine month range. And then the infliction point this week is still sitting at one month, but one in three of this period's respondents answered that they felt we have already hit the peak. So that's a bit of a positive, even though we're still sitting at that nine month range for this becoming a minor health issue. And then for the financial normalcy in businesses, that's sitting at about 10 and a half months, which is a slight dip down from the last period, which was sitting at 11 months. Each week I ask you about AR and AP. Any changes on the negative outlooks here? A couple things. So for AR, I mentioned in the headline section that uh, period over period is still negative for accounts receivable um, and is sitting right around two and a half times negative. But this is the best or the least bad that it's been since the survey started. So, you know, there's been movements in the last couple of periods of the monitor. So we'll continue to monitor that. Um, it's nice seeing that come off the, uh, the bottom of the hyper, hyper negative to just very negative at this point. The other element uh, we asked about, or we ask about at different times, we cycle some questions in and out, has to do with the slowdown of AP, you know, organizations paying more slowly. There's a number of reasons people can give for why they're paying more slowly, freeing up cash, the move to work from home created issues, et cetera. So about one in three companies are still paying more slowly than they normally do. And so it hasn't really changed too much, but, uh, but there's definitely a, a longer time for uh, DPO. Before we break for the period, what do we need to be thinking about for the weeks ahead? Yeah, a couple things uh, come to mind among a, a myriad of, of different options that are you know beyond just what the survey is. So one has to do with uh, jobs number. We had a very good report uh, this past period. It surprised the market with how strong it was. And so we want to see if that's going to continue. Obviously, it's not growing as quickly as it dropped, but uh, jobs is going to be a big indicator uh, showing a certain level of confidence. I think the uh, you know some of the issues about backlog orders and businesses are certain businesses are going to be able to recover, and then from the COVID nineteen front, 
uh, we had fully a third of our respondents indicated they thought that the health issue had reached or passed the inflection point. So we were going down in terms of either number of cases, number of deaths, and you know some of the numbers and things we've seen about uh, uh, the mortality rates declining, uh, likely due to better treatment uh, and just learning how to address the issue, could have a, a pretty big impact on how people see things going forward. Will that cause uh, a recovery to happen faster or more of a snapback? Uh, less of a U, more of a V, more of a swoosh, or, um, or will it be a, the type of W that we're looking at? So those are some of the things that we'll look at among many of the other geopolitical and other, other issues out there. Excellent. Well, Craig and Alexa, thanks so much for um, joining me today for this insightful update. And I look forward to speaking with you both in a couple of weeks. Thanks, Meredith. Thank you. We wanted to encourage you to take the Global Crisis Monitor Survey repeatedly while it's live. It runs from Wednesday to Tuesday every week. You can go to treasurycoalition.com and follow the links. Add your voice and insight so that as a profession, we can take positive and knowledgeable steps to move our organizations and nations forward. Invest five minutes each week at treasurycoalition.com and get great information and insights while helping our profession and organizations. This podcast is provided for informational purposes only, and statements made by Strategic Treasurer LLC on this podcast are not intended as legal, business, consulting, or tax advice. For more information, visit and bookmark strategictreasurer.com.